Welcome to Christ Notes. Thanks for logging on today. We're going to talk today, why was there ever a law? Okay? So Galatians 3.19, the Holy Spirit, once again, having Paul write, he says, What then was the purpose of the law? It was added later on, after the promise. Remember, faith came first, so the law came afterwards. To disclose and expose men their guilt because of transgressions, and to make men more conscious of sin. And it was intended to be in effect until the seed, the descendant, the heir, should come, to and concerning whom the promise had been made. And it, the law, was arranged and ordained and appointed through the instrumentality of angels. And it was given by the hand in the person of the go-between Moses, an, an intermediary person between God and man. Now a go-between has to do with and implies more than one party. There can be no mediator for just one person, yet God is only one person, and he was the sole party giving the promise to Abraham. But the law was a contract between two, God and Israel. Its validity was dependent on both. So why did God give the law? Jesus hadn't come yet. The Holy Spirit had not been given to men as it has to us now. So what did God do? He gave some rules. And who did he give it to? Israel. You notice it wasn't given to the Gentiles. The law says it was, the law was given between two parties. It clearly says it. Between God and Israel. Not between God and mankind. God and Israel. The Gentiles were never, ever part of the law. So why do we try to do it today? We shouldn't. It was never intended for us. The law came because Jesus had not yet come, because the Holy Spirit had not yet come to man. So they had not been empowered with the very glory of our Father to live in the abundance of life, just like Jesus lives in the abundance of life. So God gave these rules and he said, look, this will help you. This will make your life better. Remember, faith came first. The law did not trump faith, but man said, ah, now we have the guidelines. Now we have a rule. Now we can do something. And that's what it was. The law, people took the law and they said, now look, we have responsibilities. People could then lord it over them. They could cause them to be guilty about it. They could boast about it. Look what I'm doing. Man loves to do that. But remember, faith was first. So they didn't have to completely follow the law. They had that covenant of faith. They could have believed. You know, but they, they, they went after the law, which was only intended to say, look, just don't do these things and you'll have a better life. But they made it like, ah, now this will give us, this will make us right with our father. And it didn't. They never were right with our father because our father never intended for it to be a justification. He never intended for it to be the basis of our relationship with him. Think of what type of parent you would be if you said, all right, Got kids, I'm going to lay down these rules and laws. You keep these rules and laws and you do these things, and then I'm going to be your parent and I'll provide for you. That's not the way it works. The parent provides for the child. And if the child isn't doing something right, it's up to the parent to teach that child why that is wrong and empower them to do what is right. And it's not based on the child. It's based on the parent. The responsibility of success is always far more on the parent when it comes to the little children and the children than it is on the child. If one of my kids was struggling, say, with math, it was up to Beth and I to do what was needed in their life to make sure that they didn't struggle in that. If they needed food, it was up to us to provide that food. And that's what the kingdom of heaven is like. Jesus said, kingdom of heaven, it's like little children. It's not like adult children. It's like little children. And so our father is responsible. And man took this thing and they ran with the law. And they loved law, just like we do today. We love to, oh, these are guidelines. These are rules. And now we can follow those. And I'm following them and you're not. Or I'm, I'm, I can, you know, condemn myself. Oh, my God, I'm not doing it. And I can draw attention to myself because, oh, woe is me. I'm not doing what I'm supposed to do. But it's all grace. And it's because it's grace, you can be used in unbelievable ways. And that is what is going to give you an abundant life. That is what will give you peace that passes all understanding, is knowing that our Father uses you, that it's up to Him, that the responsibility is His, it's not yours. 
And that is what brings us peace. You can't have peace if you think there's these rules and you've got to follow them. If you believe that way, you're doomed to destruction. And like we studied in 2 Corinthians, the Ten Commandments, man, that, that is nothing but death. Law is nothing but death. Grace and peace and, and faith and love, that's life. And that's what we have. It's all free. So I'm trying to get, I mean, we got a long way to go in Galatians. And it just, it, that's how important it is that God just keeps saying it over and over and over again. You don't have law. You have peace. Enjoy it. And, and it's the only way you'll ever stop doing the things you don't want to do and the things that don't bring victory to the body of, of Christ, that, you know, the, the, the things that, that cause hardship will go away when you realize I, there's no law that says I can't do it. Then you're free to just live and, and it goes away. That's the only way. You tell a law, you give somebody a law, they'll, they'll do exactly, this. it's like a diet. I'm going to go on a diet. I'll eat everything in sight. When I stop thinking about the diet, I lose weight. That's just the way, the, the same thing with the law. So I hope that encourages you. I hope it helps. Be blessed in the power of our Father's might this day.